Kevin Miterman is a reconstructive plastic surgeon by day and a guitar maker by night. After medical school, Kevin decided to learn more about guitar building and trained with master builders in Massachusetts. By combining advanced materials like carbon fiber with wood and traditional guitar building wisdom, Kevin builds double top acoustic guitars that are as technically brilliant as they are beautiful. There isn't a single moment when I'm in here making guitars that isn't joy. I'm Kevin Miterman and I'm a guitar maker and I've been doing that for about 18 years and I'm also a plastic surgeon in town. I've uh, been a guitar player since I was about nine years old. Uh, for some reason the tone of the guitar, first time I heard a guitar played well, it just uh, thrilled me to no end. Since I was uh, quite a young person, I've always built things. And when I was in high school, there was a guitar maker there. He had a guitar store where he would sell regular guitars, Martins and Taylors and all those things you hear about. The guitars that he was making sounded better, intrinsically better, and I wanted to know why. Then I went off to medical school residency, but then when I started my practice, I decided I wanted to recapture some of these things that make life special. And so I uh, would take my vacations from my, my job and I would go off for, say, a week or two at a time to a guitar making school in Massachusetts and work with these master guitar makers. And once I'd learned what I needed, I, I started building uh, guitars myself and I've been doing it ever since. It's meditative. People ask, oftentimes how this relates to surgical uh, skills and surgical training and I think that it really is very much the same. In other words, my, my uh, joy for working with my hands I suppose came first and it manifested in my job which is surgery but also my working with, with wood and surgery is, I love doing it um, but there's an intensity to it and this is sort of the antithesis of that intensity. It's peaceful and is completely without tension and that's lovely and so once the shape is determined then you determine the woods you're going to use and sometimes that's a purely aesthetic choice sometimes uh, certain players want a certain wood for a certain tone so you so I kind of get all those things literally put them on the bench and and start designing when it's just raw rough hunks of wood this is where all everything begins I buy the wood in a rough form uh, for example here's some East Indian rosewood that still has the you know, the saw cuts on it from the mill. The mashing sides are here and these are also rough but they'll be eventually thinned on the sander and then bent into bent into their their shapes. And so uh, I used to have only two shapes of, of guitar and now have collected uh, you know eight or ten different uh, uh, sets of, of, of work boards. So here's how the neck begins. A big hunk of wood but then at some point you get down to just whittling it basically. These are little surgical lights that I bought from a surgical supply house. I also learned that in the operating room there are always two lights, one over each shoulder, so no matter where you're working you're eliminating the shadow and so when I'm working I'll often use my two little lights and I'll have one light coming over each shoulder and so no matter where I'm working, there's, there's, never, there's never a shadow. And that makes for some great detail work. It's fun to see as you start scraping back, bringing the woods level and getting the glue off of there, it's fun to see the, the lines pop. This, this is uh, rosewood and this is poplar. And it's fun to see as you're scraping the result poke through. And then I assemble the back to the sides and I have uh, the first step. And then I start on the top. I choose those woods. All right, so this is the way I make my tops using the composite materials. So traditionally, a top for a guitar, which is the vibrating element of it, comes out of a single book-matched set of wood. These days, people are using composite materials to try to get a guitar top that is as resonant and is as strong, but is actually lighter, so you get more sound and maybe even more controllable sound. From the audience perspective, no one would know there's any difference. For example, this is a 
double topped guitar with all the composites and all the fancy things inside the guitar, but you'd never know it. All guitar tops are not just a piece of wood, but they're braced somehow on the inside with, with a series of, of braces. Uh, traditionally, these are solid wood. I use a little thin sheet of, of carbon fiber. Sandwich that between two thin pieces of wood and you get a brace that is inflexible because of that, that almost like an I-beam on the, on the inside. It's very strong. If I get a request from a, a guitar player for something, uh, I'll work it up in a prototype first so that I can change one element at a time um, to try to hone in on the sound that they're looking for without having to build a whole new guitar. So, there's a six string. Here's a 12 string prototype. This is a Nara wood guitar. It's got a really big sound. I look forward to coming in here at the end of a long day. I guess I'm sort of a, a geek. In other words, I don't do much besides my work and spend time with my family and then make instruments and plan guitar concerts. It's really a good life. Uh, it's a simple life, but it's, but it's mine, and I like it. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts. And by the members of Prairie Public.